The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Grains, CNM Seeds, and Syngenta Canada. Find more episodes of The Wheat School by going to wheatschool.com. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to The Wheat School. Today I'm in Prince Edward Island. We're talking about making cereals profitable in the Maritimes and who better to talk to than Eric Rector from Syngenta. Eric, how's it going? Very good. Thanks, Bern. Really glad to have you. Look forward to talking with you about how to make winter wheat profitable on BI. Yeah, now you and I have talked a lot over the years. We've had a lot of conversations when you were in Ontario. You're now here in PEI. How long have you been here? I started full-time with Syngenta in uh, September. Of 2018. How time flies when you're having fun. (laughs) 18. Now here, tell me what this wheat crop, winter wheat, looked like in PEI and and in the Maritimes when you came down this way. It was interesting when it came in 18. There had been growers uh, growing winter wheat, uh, not necessarily on a consistent basis. We had some winter survival problems. But in general, it was still a relatively new crop for a, a large number of our growers. And yields, although um, you know maybe profitable, were a little disappointing in that 1.5 to 1.75, 1.8 metric ton per acre. Yeah. Now, 2024, fast forward six years. Um, what's the state of the the winter wheat crop now? I, I've, I'm heard, I'm hearing good things. So we've increased acres. Uh, we're up probably into the mid 20,000 acres uh, on the island. 25,000 acres and uh, yields in about five five seasons have increased. I'll say about 30 percent, about a metric ton per acre. Wow! And uh, and uh, the you know the the growers that are working at their wheat production system uh, are definitely growing a, a solid crop, and it's it's contributing to the bottom line. Yeah. Now, average bushels per acre might be in the in the mid 80s, somewhere around there. Yeah, mid 80s, touching 90. Wow. There's, there's a few that are above that, um, but uh, we're just trying to move the the entire group at you know a group along that curve. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of factors that go into that success. Um, Eric, I want to talk about them. And um, first of all, let's let, let's talk about the yin yield enhancement network. We've got one in Ontario. A lot of growers involved. Um, the first yin started here. That's correct. Burn uh, credit to Aaron Mills at, at Canada and the Atlantic Grains Council. It started Yen Yield Enhancement Network in 2019. That was the first time that uh, they had pulled the uh, uh, growers together and encouraged them to participate. And essentially, it is a yield contest, but there is an obligation for the grower to share their production practices. Mm-hmm. And it has been really quite interesting. I think one of the the things is it's peer to peer or shared learning, but it also sets it up where the grower can believe or see what's possible. Right, right. And uh, it's, it's certainly been a, a great benefit to cereal production on the yeah. island. Now you've had all hands on deck, lots of research scientists and extension specialists involved in this. That's right, that's right. Um, when we started on this journey, we brought Wheat Pete down. Uh, Sonny Murray was involved with the, as, a, as the crops rep in Nova Scotia. Um, we had used other experts in the industry and the retailers included, so it was truly a team effort to pull together and, and see what we could do to help the growers yeah. grow a better cereal crop. Now, uh, growing a better cereal crop also includes you know, um, a toolbox. Yes. And uh, now Syngenta has, um, has, has got a pretty full toolbox these days, and uh, I, I think that's made a contribution as well. It has. I mean, I, uh, as I said, it had the opportunity to relocate to Prince Edward Island, and uh, shortly thereafter, Syngenta introduced the Miravis brand products. Included in there, of course, was Miravis Ace, our key fungicide applied at the T3 stage. And uh, also, we introduced Miravis uh, Neo, and we had Quilt. We originally had Trivapro and our growth regulator, which is called Modus. Very critical in this, in this uh, what we call our Syngenta stack yeah. program for cereals. So important to protect the crop, right? Absolutely. Green is green is gold. Green is your friend. I've heard some growers, you know, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the the fact that their their crop had died from drought. And after doing a bit of work on PEI, what was interesting is, in most cases, it was either a combination uh, of uh, disease, mm-hmm. or fertility, or lacking thereof, or or as I say, a combination of disease and fertility. But when we bring the system together. 
that's when the true magic happens. Yeah. Now you've uh, you've got a PGR there as well. Um, yes. I'm assuming with uh, bigger yields, bigger plants, bigger biomass, you need to make that plant stand. We're building a bigger factory to make bigger yields, and it is absolutely crucial in winter wheat as it is in other cereals. We have to keep the plant standing. Mm -hmm. Standability is critical. Uh, we talked a lot about that in corn production. It's very similar in the cereals and in winter wheat. Uh, and the role that the plant growth regulators play is paramount. We put all these uh, inputs in, we drive, the, drive that plant to a higher level of productivity, and we are going to use, and it is critical, we use plant growth regulators to keep it standing. You talk about the importance of a two-spray program. Yes, our two-spray program. So we, we're spraying at what's called a T1.5 and then a T3. The um, older traditional system may have heard before many growers were T1, uh, vegetative, uh, that was when the plant was tillering in the spring. The T2 is the emergence roughly of the flag leaf and then T3 of course at, at heading, the stage which is this field here today. But that T1, T2 and T3 was practiced even here on the island in Nova Scotia there were growers in the 80s that yeah. did the three spray program but what we tried to introduce to the growers was somewhat of a compromise but we're putting the in the T1.5 stage we're putting the herbicide the fungicide and the growth regulator as a tank mix together very critical staging we're getting it just as the plant starts to elongate and then we follow with the with as Peter said you're not a serious wheat grower if you're not spraying at T3. At T3, yeah. we do the Miravis Ace. So those are the two times, and that's the two spray program. Yeah. Now, what does the whole package bring to a grower? You obviously you mentioned, you know, it's crop protection. It is, you know, keeping that 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 factory working through grain fill. What we're trying to do, one, help the grower grow a better crop. That can mean a whole bunch of different yeah. things to different growers. But I believe at the end of the day, we're trying to make sure that the, the winter wheat crop is profitable. Mm -hmm. So in there, of course, is uh, the grain that we, we, we harvest and sell. Not only is it the increased yield, as they say, 30% or a metric ton per acre, but we also have higher quality. Yeah. We also produce more straw, about the same, almost a metric ton per acre. And there's a bit of straw moves off the island to Nova Scotia for, for bedding and the, particularly the dairy mm -hmm. industry. But we keep cereals in the rotation. Yeah. And from a uh, diversity, crop diversity, uh, soil health, uh, those are also important things. But the last thing I wanted to mention was we are driving yields higher with some fertility. It's not a, a crazy amounts. We're working with growers roughly about 30 additional units of nitrogen as mm -hmm. an example. And we're showing by keeping the plant greener, healthier, longer, we're also improving fertilizer efficiency. Mm. efficiency. So it is bringing a whole host of things. At the end of the day, we're helping them grow a better crop, put more money in their pocket, and uh, the, the stack cereal program seems awesome. to be working. Final question for you, then, and that is, you know, you're, you've been here about six years. Give me a look forward another five years uh, where, where this crop has gone, gone in the last five or six years. You know, where might it go in the future? What's the ceiling? Well, what's the ceiling? I think the end, going back to the end and the success it's had, We've had growers with uh, documented measured yields in that four metric ton mm -hmm. per acre. Um, and so is the program in Ontario. Mm -hmm. So can we get to four metric ton? Absolutely. Can we do that on the, the majority of the acres? I believe so. Mm -hmm. uh, it will take some work, but we're looking at things again, like helping growers monitor the density of their stand. So this is an awesome field. Peter would be proud of the grower. Uh, in terms of where we are, we got 60 heads or more per square foot. That's one of those magic sort of benchmarks. Can we get to 80 heads per square foot? And those are things we're going to try. It's little incremental steps, but four metric ton and beyond, Bern. That's where we want to go. go for it. Um, Eric, great to catch up with you and PEI. Thanks for uh, joining us on the Wheat School. Thank you very much, Bern. Awesome.